Hello my soccer universe, match day one of the new Champions League is in the books and it had a lot of the feeling of a match day one of a league season which is I guess what you get. Yes, all the spiel that UEFA put out that every match counts and so on did not really come true. On the other side we might be rewarded with a much more exciting match day seven and match day eight. And if you look at the background, if your team is wearing green and white hoops, you probably were quite happy with that one also for German teams. Overall it was a quite successful round. It was a round that was more or less dominated by Italy v England matchup, something that I will mention later. But as I'm doing now for most of my review videos, I'll give you first longer edits of my short videos and then I'll point out a few things after these. Then we'll look at the current standings, expectations and the upcoming matches. It was a small glimmer of hope when Christian Pulisic put Milan ahead against Liverpool at home in the third minute. And I would say for about 10 minutes Milan looked actually not that bad and rattled Liverpool a little bit. There was even another chance in there. However, once Mohamed Salah hits the crossbar in the 16th minute, it was all Liverpool. Liverpool overtook the midfield. I mean, Fofana and Loftus-Cheek never stood a chance against Ravenberg and McAllister. They were just overran and Liverpool had plenty of chances and it could have gotten really, really ugly. It also didn't help that that Mike Magnon was injured already early but was kept on and then the defense yeah Tomori and Pavlovic they're not good in the air and you could see that on both of the goals that Liverpool scored in the first half first of a free kick that Calabria did give away and yes it was a foul unfortunately and Alexander Arnold chips it in and Konate from a short distance heads it in Salah also hits the crossbar once more there was a big chance by Diogo Jota in there I thought we might get into 1-1 at halftime no Timika's corner and Van Dijk just wrestles himself and again from a very short distance heads it in towering above everyone else why cannot Milan defenders jump. Second half, Menyar had to come off with an injury. Toriane, young goalie, comes on. I'm fearing the worst. However, Liverpool took the foot off the gas. There were actually a few chances, a few Rafaleo runs. I was not happy with the way that the Norwegian referee officiated the game. Two little fouls called in a way and I usually like it more open but that didn't jive well with me. Yeah, and then it's a counter day. Kakpo services Soboschlai who makes it 3-1. Rafaleo laid on, hits the post but yeah. This could have gotten really, really, really ugly. 3-1 loss and now the <laughs> derby. Yeah, it's gonna be a rough week for a Milan fan. The early kickoffs were rather one-sided affairs. Juve were struggling maybe for 10-15 minutes, PSV playing some nice stuff and then Ken and Yildiz scores a Del Piero-like goal. That's a reference for you. Young guys out there and it was only one-way traffic from there on. McKenny adds a second and then after the half Nico Gonzalez makes it a third. It was absolutely comprehensive. Late on Saibari gets a consolation goal for PSV. It was a very similar story in Bern, except that Young Boys have even less quality than PSV does. Villa absolutely dominating this game after a spirited start by the Swiss side. Yuri Tielemans forgotten in the box, makes it 1 0. Then a really, really weird goal. Unnecessary back pass by the eBay defense. Sees it back to the goalie. Seemingly Watkins is foul, but Ramsey stays in the game. Makes it 2 0. A goal for Watkins is disallowed. Lay down, then Onana adds a third, but this could have been also 4 5 6 for Villa. One way traffic. Speaking of one-sided, Bayern Munich destroyed Dinamo Zagreb 9-2 for the first time ever they scored nine goals. It was a very one-sided game overall with Harry Kane getting a penalty of hat-tricks and adding a fourth goal as well. The goal of the evening though came through Rafa Guerrero. It was the second one that basically set Bayern on the way. There were some nervy moments when Manuel Neuer had to come off and then Dinamo Zagreb quickly made it 3-2 in the 49th and the 50th. Oh, they just poked the bear and Bayern then just steamrolled over the poor Croats. However, there was nothing one-sided about Stuttgart's visit to the Bernabeu. Stuttgart actually was really well in the game and put quite some pressure on Real Madrid who scored and threw Kylian Mbappé right after the half and that rattled Stuttgart for a little bit. However, they get back und of getting an equalizer, fully deserved equalizer. Stuttgart would have deserved to get something out of that, but Real Madrid won because they have the better players. As simple as that. Modric corner, Rüdiger heads it in and then Endrik makes the scoring too high in my opinion. And lastly, Portuguese champion Sporting had a field day with a rather toothless little side. They took the lead through Jokeres, then Gomes is sent off for a second yellow card. Midway through the second half, the bus scores probably the goal of the evening. A beautiful long-range shot 
into the top corner of the goal and Lille have the first shot on goal late on. So this was very convincing for Sporting. Salzburg entered their next Champions League campaign with big ambition, big words and were swiftly embarrassed by Sparta Prague who on their return to Europe's top competition beat Salzburg 3-0. First goal came after two minutes already through Kairin and then Ola Tunji just before the half made it 2-0 and right after the half another defensive error by the Salzburg defense was punished by Lachi to make it a comprehensive 3-0 scoreline. I also have to mention this is a game that I could not watch due to the crazy right splitting in Austria. This was an exclusive game on Canal Plus and I'm not sure if I should make a third subscription only to watch an exclusive game. It was also the return of Bologna to Europe's top competition after 60 years. Yes, 60 years. Back then it was just the beginning of the European Cup. It was raining in Bologna and the only real highlight of the game came early on when Porsche tripped up an opponent and Sudakov takes a penalty and sees his penalty saved by Skorupski. After that, Bologna tried to create chances but never really had the oomph and Schachter were always dangerous on the counter without creating much either. So it ends in a logically nil-nil. In the only game they produced loads of goals, Celtic beats low and Bratislava at home 5-1. Finally again a win for Celtic. Remember the team that got the easiest draw. They opened the scoring in the 17th minute through scales and then in the second half the goals came quick and fast. Furuhashi in the 47th and then Engels with a penalty in the 56th made it already 3-0. Kevin Wimmer former last player scored a beautiful goal to pull one back for Slovan Bratislava, Halva Maeda and Aida. Add two more to make it an emphatic win and maybe Celtic have a good chance of progressing. While Dortmund had a lot of initiative in Bruges Overall, the Belgians kept the game tight and were well in the game. This was a really, really tight one until Gittens gets the first goal in the 76 minute, a double deflection, and then he had the second one in the 86 to settle the game. That then Girassi converts the penalty to make it 3-0, was never really in the cards. It was a really, really tight game. I think a 1-0 scoreline for Dortmund would have been way more representative of that one. The rematch of the 2023 final ended in a goalless draw with Inter completely frustrating City. Being defensively tight but also quite dangerous themselves. Also notable is of course that City played in their weird fourth jersey. Oasis inspired of course. I don't really like it and it looked odd to see them play in this shirt. And of course this was not the preparation I was hoping that Inter will have for the Derby. Now they will enter this Derby with their chest pumped to the limit. Even more so than it was before that game. And then there was a curious game between PSG and Girona. Girona came to the Parc de Prose and really matched PSG with intensity and play, especially in the first half. Second half, though, PSG created more chances and it was Gazaniga, Girona's goalkeeper, that kept him in the game. Usman Dembele again, missing plenty of chances. One of the most frustrating players in Europe, that much is for sure. And then it's exactly Gazaniga who lets a Nuno Mendes shot or attempt of a shot pass through his legs to give PSG the winning goal in the 90th minute. That did not fit the game, although I think overall PSG was probably the better team. <sighs> Girona had a very, very good start to their Champions League campaign. Benfica started the game in Belgrade brightly with both of the Turkish internationals scoring two goals in the first half. Akta Kökl opened the scoring and Kökçü then in the 29th added a second one. They saw then the game out. Yes, Middleton put one back, but overall I think Benfica were good for that win. Meanwhile in Rotterdam, Feyenoord were taken apart by the counter-attack of Leverkusen. Feyenoord had the majority of possession and maybe controlled the game even more, but as soon as Leverkusen had the ball, they went to the goal and they kept on scoring. Wirtz opened the scoring the fifth, there was a goal disallowed for Feyenoord in the ninth through an offside, and then it, the goals came really quick. Grimaldo in the 30th and Wirtz again in the 36th made it 3-0 and then a Wellenreiter own goal before the break. It was not pretty for Feyenoord, but it seems Leverkusen have overcome their wobble after scoring goals early this season. In the third Italy v England matchup this week, Atalanta and Arsenal played a nil-nil draw. Arsenal probably had a bit more of the first half, then a second half, a penalty is given for Atalanta, Retegi steps up, great save by Raya, even better the one on the rebound, although I thought Retegi should have pulled it a little bit more to the side. Arsenal then keeping it tight and don't allowing Atalanta many chances. Antoine Griezmann was a starman in Atletico's 2-1 win over Leipzig, a comeback win it has to be said, because Sesko gave Leipzig an early lead in the fourth minute, however Griezmann himself then equalizes in the 28th, Atletic creating tons of chances, although Leipzig were always dangerous on the counter-attack and then in the 90th minute it's a cross by Griezmann that Jimenez heads in for the winner. 
On the European debut, Brest are getting a Champions League win. 2-1 over Austrian champion Sturm Graz. It was a rather even affair. Brest took the lead through Magnetti. However, Sturm Graz were well in the game, scoring off the goal, got an equalizer before the half. However, there was also a crucial injury to Gregory Wüttrich early on that really messed up with Sturm's plans. And the longer the game went on, the more Brest were dominant. In the end, they get the winner through Sima, and there could have been a few more if it was Kjell Skerpen making a few good saves for Sturm. Congrats. Monaco might not have many fans, but they pull the stars into the ground. With Michael Jordan in attendance, Monaco pulled the upset over Barcelona, beating him 2-1. However, the result was gravely influenced by a 10th minute red card for Eric Garcia. And then Monaco played for most of the time with a man more. They take the lead through Akliush in the 16th. However, in the 28th, Lamine Yamal with a typically run makes it 1-1. And it seems like Barcelona can hold on to the draw. However, then there's another defensive error. Again, Ter Stegen a little bit at fault for that. When Ile Kena is sent deep and alone onto the goal and scores the winner for Monaco. In hindsight, there were three big results that really stood out on this match day one. The first one being Monaco's win against Barcelona. That yes, the red card for Eric Garcia definitely played a big role in that. We all were looking forward to seeing Barcelona back on the international stage now that they have started so well in La Liga. But that red card undid it. And yes, Eric Garcia is an obvious target, but on the other side... Why is Ter Stegen playing him the pass? Although Ter Stegen not looking good on the second goal as well. I just wanted to emphasize on that. I would say this is a blip for now. And yes, injuries definitely didn't help Barcelona there as well. But it also shows that Monaco are a serious team that we may have to look out for during the competition. The second one is, of course, Bayern's 9-2 win over Dinamo Zagreb. Boy! If we thought that every game here counts and the goal difference could come into play, Bayern really put down the marker on that one. It also shows that the difference between certain teams within this Champions League is quite huge. We also saw this with Celtic's 5-1 win over Slovan Bratislava, a team that's similarly bad in relation to their opponents. Yes, there was a wobble in there for Bayern. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> when it went from 3-0 to 3-2 within five minutes, you thought, oh, is this a game in there? No, it never was a real game in there, Bayern. And Munich just absolutely thrashing the Croatian champions. And then the last big match, and this is already the first game of the England v Italy matches, was of course the replay of the 2005 and 2007 Champions League final between Milan and Liverpool. And boy, did this not look good for Milan. Yes, they started well. And yes, they seemingly had with the 4-4 pressing Liverpool high in the first 10 minutes. That looked good. But as soon as Liverpool figured out how to play around that, they were so dominant. This could have been really ugly for Milan. And while by itself, the result maybe doesn't look as bad. I mean, in fact, after the game, I said, yeah, this was a 3-1 loss to Liverpool. Yes, you were outplayed. It was a little bit... A little bit like Liverpool going to last last year where they also found themselves 1-0 down. But then once they turned it on, Liverpool came out the clear winners. Although Lusk in this game looked a whole lot better than what Milan did in this one. And the fans were absolutely mad at them. And it became even worse when you saw how Inter and Atalanta did against their respective opponents. They stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top two teams in the Premier League, Manchester City and Arsenal. That makes Milan's performance look really, really, really bad. We already know Fonseca is in serious trouble and I think firing him that early in the season means that you have messed up leadership at Milan. But yeah, it's probably a change that will need to happen eventually because yes, he is a very dogmatic coach. He can play beautiful stuff at Lille at the beginning of the last season. It also didn't uh, do well. And if you're not willing to give him the time because you want to push for a title, then you're never going to win with this squad. It also has to be said, have you seen how well Inter are? And this banking I'm expecting on Sunday against Inter, <sighs> I'm seriously considering not watching the Milan Derby which is something to say coming from me. Speaking of watching, yeah, there were empty seats at the San Siro. The pricing is off. I hate that teams think that in Champions League we have to crank up the prices. Liverpool is attractive, but you know, all the others, you don't need to follow the American model. But going back to the England v Italy matchups, I think Inter, and I maybe gave it short shrift in these review videos, this was not a bad game. This was a good 0-0. Especially when I watched the highlights, I was probably a little bit victim of watching it all at once in, in a way. Inter had chances. 
City has really good chances in this game. In the end, it ends nil-nil, but this was kind of a accidental nil-nil. But the way Inter went to Manchester City, pool, this was really, really impressive. Defensively, they are sound, they can hurt you on the counter-attack, and City don't like when someone is tight at the back. Tight at the back is also what we saw from Arsenal against Atalanta, which is the other thing. Yes, Arsenal had a little bit more in the first half. This was a worse nil-nil, it has, has it been said. Arsenal had more of the game in the first half. But in the second half, after Atalanta got the penalty, Atalanta actually were pushing for the win, but Arsenal kept it tight and kept the chances to a minimum. But that was a credible performance by Atalanta, and yes, Arsenal have injuries, so maybe we should not put too much into this game, but I expect a very similar game on the weekend when they take on Manchester City. I want to give two shoutouts for teams that have lost. The first one is Stuttgart, who probably should have gotten at least a point out of Madrid. They really went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Real Madrid. It was just that Real Madrid have the better players. And the other one is Girona, who played their game at the Parc de Pras. And for a half, it looked really good. Then they were hanging on, and yes, the Gazaniga mistake is a really, really, really bad one. Shoutout also to Start Brest, getting their first win. And yes, it was against an Austrian opponent, which leads me to the last observation that I want to make from the Austrian perspective, this was not good. Salzburg going to Prague, I thought already, I mean, on paper I think Salzburg should beat Sparta Prague, potentially, but this Sparta Prague team is very, very undervalued. This is a team that went to Malmö and beat them. Big! I already thought, be careful, and immediately got smashed in the mouth. Yes, they had all the, all the possession, but Sparta Prague were really punishing their defensive mistakes. Sparta Prague did really well there, and it's sobering for Salzburg, because from their own understanding, they should actually beat Sparta Prague every single time. No, this is not gonna happen anymore, you need to do a better job. Sturm Graz is showing as Stad Brest, I think this was a game that they could have won. However, they got worse the longer the game went, and yes, the injury to Gregor Wüttrich did not help them. Yes, they created chances in the first half, but in the end, I think it was Goli Skerpen who made the scoreline palatable in the end, and Brest... Bravo, best story of last season and you can celebrate. And so let's have a look at the first league standings. They really don't tell us much. It, it's really like the first day of the season. I just let them rattle through here. Here's the top half, of course, Bayern, Celtic, Leverkusen lead. And who is on the bottom? Of course, the teams that lost so big. Much more interesting, of course, the expected standings. Where we had actually more movement than I would have expected. Now it's Real Madrid because City lost points that are top to change. I wouldn't put much stock into that. Bayern Munich, of course, with the big winner also. Also going a little bit higher because you could see them winning out in a way. We see of course all the Austrian teams falling out of the top eight. There's a big drop for Milan of course. Yes you lost to Liverpool at home but it was a home game. A game that you should win for sure. Most interesting probably are the chances. Yeah the top five have not changed at all. It is still City but Real Madrid are getting closer. Those two and then I said Arsenal, Bayern, Liverpool probably I still would count Barcelona in there, but that opening loss probably didn't help their chances for sure. When I look at the upcoming matches, oh, I see quite a few goals in there as well. I think Arsenal PSG is the standard tie from the Tuesday fixtures. Aston Villa against Bayern Munich, I would call the standard tie for the Wednesday ones. Although, you know, there are a few other ones in there as well. I'm curious what Leipzig will do against Juve, for instance. Benfica against Atletico sounds not so bad. When I look at the Austrian teams, Salzburg now hosts Brest. Brest get the full Austrian treatment. And Sturm Graz hosts Club Bruges. I think three points somehow should come our way. Milan going to Leverkusen. Major, major, major trepidation for me. So those are my thoughts on this new Champions League. Let me know yours in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!